All right, we're gonna paint some additional folk art, glow-in-the-dark paint. I thought they changed names or something like that. I guess mine does say folk art, but it's by plaid. Um, we're gonna use this as our binder or adhesive for the, um, the glow-in-the-dark luminous powders. And I have a 12 pack of assorted colors here. And the reason why I'm using this glow in the dark uh, paint as the adhesive is you know, the, the more um, layering that you add with this glow in the dark paint, the better, the more, I don't know, whatever, the more light retention there seems to be. Um, which makes sense, you know, just there's more, there's just a thicker layer of, uh, you know, that light retaining um, whatever element in that. Okay, now as I paint this over um, my moons here, it looks pretty good. I, I didn't know what it would look like over the top of some of this black. I didn't know if it would block out some of it, but this is, my, it's almost a transparent um, hue here. Um, I guess similar to, it's almost like using white glue or something like that. That's what it looks like to me. And I don't know what this is going to look like when it dries, but I don't mind if there's, um, oh, kind of a different, um, value of the texturing on this moon, because the, you know, if it's kind of the light source in a scene, let me go over the whole thing on it. In fact, on some of these, or on all of them, maybe. I think that looks pretty good. Because I was thinking, eh. I was thinking about maybe stamping these moons out in a lighter color anyway. I don't know, maybe that wasn't a good idea now that I think about it. Because when I put the powder over it now, you know, it's going to stick to anywhere where I've... Uh, applied that but okay I'm going to start off with this blue green just your typical um, I don't know whatever glow in the dark color you know the traditional let me see if I can get a little bit of a lighter pour here Okay, I'm putting it over that black. This this is not too bad. I'm just lightly sprinkling it down. And I really feel like I'm making uh, sugar cookies or something right here. <laughs> Takes me back to uh, not really doing it, but uh, like when I was a kid, but it takes me back to when I was doing it with my kid. It's like one of the first cooking kind of uh, projects we've ever done. All right, so that was the blue-green. Um, maybe I'll go with more. Uh, let's see here. So we'll go ahead and paint these off. Uh, let me do some of these smaller ones too here. I didn't really get a great impression on some of these. Some of these, the bottom part of it is a little bit thicker, my line, because I had to kind of press down um, harder on the moon stamp uh, to make the impressions because this paper, remember, it's textured and very rippled on there. Um, so I had to press a little bit harder than I normally would when stamping on a flat surface because this is not flat. All right, now the only thing I'm going to have to remember is just which one of these I've uh, painted up already. This powder is pretty thin here. Uh, the powder, I don't know if it'll give it... I, I gotta imagine it's going to give it a little bit of an extra boost in terms of light retention. Um, we'll see just how much of it it does. Okay, I wasn't sure if I was going to put this powder on all of them either all of my um, moons. But I think it looks pretty good. It's it's not it's not obtrusive to the um, 
to the imagery on here. I, I don't find, at least. Okay, now, now that I've laid that down there, I think I'm going to spread that powder around a little bit, too. I'll just spread it with a brush, because I'm thinking maybe I didn't get it on everything. Or, you know, all over the, uh, you know, a, a smooth application of it on the, uh, on the paint. Now, um, I wonder if I should use, I think I'll, what I'll do is after I, after I lay this down here, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take a spray sealant, an acrylic sealant, and then what we'll do is we'll seal these down so that it'll really, um, seal in the powder on top of these other moons. Now I won't need to seal it, it's just that the powder, um, the powder itself I think will require some sealant. Okay, let me pause here and then I'll paint up some more of these and we'll probably go into some different colors, we'll show you what those look like. Okay, I've applied more um, paint on these five right here. And let's take a look here. We have so many different tones here. Here's a yellow green. The other one was a blue green. Let's go with the yellow green here. Another kind of, you know, traditional glow in the dark color. Let me see. Oh, I haven't even opened up a lot of these. Hmm. These are all sealed off, which is good. And I'm just going to that open like this. I should be working faster than this uh, as that paint dries on there. Okay, much less of an angle. It's getting me a kind of a lighter application of this more. I'm, I'm not going to save the powder, the, uh, the excess powder on here. Okay, now this one is definitely giving it a, a warmer looking um, hue. or resulting in a warmer hue. You can see that yellowish tinge. And then over the top of the black, I can, you know, it's definitely covering it up a little bit. Okay, now one of the things I should say too is when I was painting these, because I'm gonna cut them up, you know, not that I was being super careful, but um, you know, you don't need to be careful at all when, uh, when painting these, you know, in other words, you just go outside the line, feel free to go out, paint outside the line. All right, yellow green and blue green. I don't think I'm going to spread that around. After after I thought about um, spray sealing these, I thought, eh, I don't need to really spray that around. I don't think. But yeah, look at my, that uh, tinge there. That's pretty nice. But I also I think I applied more um, paint on these five as well. But let's take a look at some other colors too. All right, that last page, I just used some more of the uh, yellow green on some of the smaller uh, moons. But on this one, here's a sky blue here. If I want just a, a straight cool blue, um, uh, whatever, temperature. And I've painted these three large ones and two of the small ones here. Yeah, that's interesting. The sky blue really looks, just the powder color itself looks fairly warm. Right now I thought, you know, what I'm going to do was with these, I'm going to spray seal it. And I'm not going to cut them out until I use them, I think. I think um, it'll just be easier to take a look at a sheet and see which uh, 
color I want to use with a certain scene, then I'll cut it out rather than, you know, cut them all out and having to kind of flip through them like a deck of cards every time I, you know, I'm kind of looking for a certain color. I should really um, write, make a note of what color I'm doing on here. All right, so we have some sky blue ones right here. We have five. And then this is a set of a lot of different colors right here. I don't think I'm going to do like pink or orange on uh, these, but I don't know, maybe. I, another thing you can do too is I, I guess you can mix colors too. So maybe we'll try a mixed one on one of these. Um, we'll see what we can come up with here. All right, we have a blue and a sky blue here. The blue is probably going to look pretty dark. Okay, I've done these three right here and these three down here. I don't know if I'm going to use too much of this blue um, just on its own. We'll test it out on one of these. And that, the reason being is because I want my moon to be my light source in my scene. So if I have something, let's say that dark on there, it's not going to look like a light source. So I tell you what, I'm going to try it on this one right here, but I'm kind of putting some of it in that, whatever, the dark um, textures of the moon. And then we'll go with the sky blue here. And then we'll add this powder down into this, um, the open areas, the lighter areas. Like that, like so. Yeah, let me put a little bit of this on the, this one too. That's a little bit this one is just, it's just too dark. I mean, for other types of projects, maybe that'd be cool. But uh, on this one, I don't think I want that. All right, let me see what we have here. We have a gold. Might be kind of interesting. Neutral orange. And yellow. Hmm. Kind of more boutique colors. I don't see myself using those quite as often. I guess I'm much more of a traditionalist when it comes to glow-in-the-darks. <laughs> oh, this orange, I don't know, this orange might be pretty cool. If like, if I'm doing like an autumn scene and I have autumn colors um, in the day daylight, um, this could be something that would match with it pretty cool. I know it's the moonlight, but um, we can do some, something kind of more thematic. You know, it's like when you receive like a warm moon rising, it's always a, a really cool um, visual. I like that, that color right there. All right, let's see. Let's add some more of these smaller ones into the mix. Tell you what, let me hit this one just a little bit right here. I'll use the orange as my darker hue in those darker areas of the moon. And then let's test out some of this yellow in the lighter areas of the moon. So, you know, when we're doing this these to these moons, we're we're kind of sacrificing some of the just the visual look of uh, the piece, our scenes, when seen in just regular light. Okay. It's gonna look be like Oh, what is that? That's a weird color, you know what I mean? Um, to see a moon as, but this is all about. Well, I don't know if it's all about, but it's it's largely about, um, you know, what the pieces are going to look like um, in the dark. Just add a little tinge of warmth right down in that area. See, the mix looks a little bit better than just one straight color, doesn't it? All right, let's see. All right, so we have some warm moons here. By the way, um, adding this extra paint on here, it's really light in my studio here, but even when I just transferred um, my other moons, that first sheet to the floor, I can see it. It's glowing here in, the, uh, in this very light room, which is kind of cool. So I have a feeling that this is going to, you know, create some decent impact in terms of light retention and uh, our our glow when we charge up these uh, 
these moons in the light. So, um, I don't know. I think this extra layering is going to be pretty effective here. All right, so let's take a look at some other combinations. All right, let's see what we can do here. All of the rest of these are coded, but I might leave a couple of them just um, plain. Okay, let, let me see if I can layer um, a couple of these. So we're going with the, uh, this is gold. And what I'm going to attempt here is this thing called, uh, well, I don't know what they call it, but um, in graphic arts, we used to call this type of thing a split fountain. It's where you have these transitioning um, analogous colors on a, a single piece. Split fountain is what we call it in a, like when you're doing silk screening. Let me see, did I open this one? Oh, be a good idea to open it. Interesting that they color code the, uh, the seal on the inside of the... Uh, inside of the bottles. So far, I kind of like that. Look at that one right there. And here, this is a bright red. I remember there's a bunch of uh, powder on um, this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these outside and um, seal them off. Or I, I'm going to tap them off and then before before sealing. All right, so that is the split fountain red. I'm going to do another couple of reds here, I think. Just all red. That'd have to be a pretty dark sky then. Oh, one of the things I was going to say too is um, when I coated these with some extra paint, that seals off the, the, um, it seals off, I'm looking for, uh, let's go with this blue green again. It seals off the stays on ink that's on here, okay? And that stays on ink is a solvent ink, and that could potentially go back into solution when you hit it with a, um, like a spray sealant, okay? Because that binder that's in the spray sealants could dissolve solvent inks, okay? So by putting this water-based coating over the top of it, I think that um, removed um, the potential of that happening. Okay, let's see. Let's go with a yellow-green here. Okay, maybe I lied. I thought I'm going to keep a couple of these just as is without any uh, powder. Oh, this is kind of fun. <laughs> if you're enjoying something about your process, you know, uh, you know, just why not just kind of go overboard a little bit or a lot. Um, all right. So It's like when you're a cook, you know, and you're learning a new recipe, then um, you're going off the formula. And then I feel that over the course of uh, this video right here, I've become more comfortable with like doing these um, additions. And I can see kind of maybe what's needed on a couple of these um, or what could potentially kind of help it out. So that's a little bit of a layered. Like I'll try to make this top. A lot of this is going to just sprinkle off, you know, when I tap it off. Um, but some of it might adhere um, to the other whatever grains, I, I guess you can call it. I think going with the um, going with the brush right here and sweeping some of it off, it was too much. It kind of lumped up a little bit, so... Um, don't do that. <laughs> or you can do it if, if you know that 
um, it's completely dry. And then there's, you know, some clumps of uh, piles of that. But it, I don't know. I don't think you really need to do that. We're going to tap it off anyway. All right, so just much more straightforward moons right here, you know, glowing tones. I guess that paint did dry pretty, um, or quite a bit lighter than um, the black that's on there. You can see some of the darker blacks in here where I didn't really cover it up with too much powder. But I don't, like I said, I don't mind that. I, you know, kind of when I stamped these out, I thought, eh, it's going to be pretty dark up there in the sky. And I usually want my light source, even if it's the moon. You know, when you look up to the moon, it's, you know, these things that are up here aren't usually black or something like that. It'd be like a lighter blue or some other kind of lighter tone. Um, but we'll we'll take a look and then we'll see what these look like. Um, spray sealed. So I'll go outside and I'll let these sit out there for, I don't know, a couple minutes to completely dry off. I'll spray seal it and then I'll bring it back in here and we'll take a look. Okay, now I have gone outside and spray sealed these and I just did this little video that I'll post on my Instagram and Facebook of um, what these look like in the dark. Okay, now one of the things about <laughs> shooting that video just now, it occurred to me that some of these are just, they're, they're not as um, luminous, glowing, you know, they don't glow as much as I'd want them to. So I'm going back in here and we'll just add in some additional paint over these, which is the fun thing about it is you can just add more if you need if you need to just to get a little bit more of that so on these ones right here this is the one where I kind of you know these top ones right here where I kind of wiped off some of that um, powder luminous powder okay and it, it just it wiped off too much okay and then I noticed the blue glow the blue gl glowing powder not uh not luminous enough. I think it was this strip of them right here. So go in and add in some additional paint right over the top. I you know, I these are all sealed off, so I don't see any um problem with just adding as many layers of this as you want just to make these um really really powerful. Now this, these, should, I don't know, these will probably last me, I don't know, a couple of years, um, all of these. I'll use the moon more often, but, you know, as far as a glow-in-the-dark application, I probably won't be using these too often. So, you know, you might as well spend a little bit of extra time to get these right. It doesn't take too long to do. And it could be pretty fun in terms of a, an overall um, look for what you're trying to achieve. Like I said, if you add these to uh, someone's uh, car, they're probably going to take a look at it, you know, in the dark. And uh, I don't know, you know, I tend to think that this scenic stamping is kind of a transportive experience um, because, you know, people relate to kind of locations or moments and uh, you know kind of gazing up at a, a full moon is one of those kind of experiences that um, you know we can all kind of relate to all right so I'm going in here I'm adding in this extra paint onto these and I can just leave the extra paint on there you know or you can add more of the the powder um, which is cool so you get kind of like powder layered into the different layers of paint, which is kind of neat. Okay, now a couple of these two. Let's take a look at these. Now these kind of glow, they glow pretty interesting. I, I do like the look of that glow on that, uh, uh, on these split fountain ones. But if this was just on a card, okay, just in regular daylight, that's not looking too good, you know, uh, to me. All right, so let's go over the top of that and kind of mute that down a little bit. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of a... Oh, kind of a mellow um, transitioning. 
between those different colors in there, okay? So this is going to go down here. Like I said, this paint is kind of transparent, not exactly transparent, but um, I had a bit of my DNA is going in here. There's a hair that got uh, stuck in there. I don't want that. Oh no, it's not my hair. It's a hair from the paintbrush. <laughs> How did that get in there? Okay, let's go over these right here. That looks better to me already, um, that transition in there. I sealed these down pretty good, but um, yeah, some of the um, powders can still moving around a touch. And this one right here, um, that one's looking really uh, kind of globby. You know, that powder on there. Like I said, I, I just... Uh, whatever, free sprinkling, or whatever you'd call it. So right here, this gold right up here with a little bit of that extra yellow kind of, uh, it's a little bit blotchy, so let's mute that out a little bit. You can come into it again just with another layer on there or something like that of a powder, maybe a different colored powder, maybe they, uh, I don't know, one of the blues or something might be kind of interesting. Oops, I just mixed this with a little bit of this blue paint that was on there. That looks kind of interesting, though. Dipped into my uh, iridescent blue paint that was on there. So we're looking at probably, I don't know, I'd say five thin layers of this... Um, glow in the dark paint on most of these moons. And like I said, it feels like moon cookies or something like that that I'm making. This is like the uh, a light egg white glaze. <laughs> All right, so there we have it. Um, this is the paper one here. And I'm trying to remember if there's any other ones on here that needed a little bit of extra boost or kick, you know, with uh, the paint. But I think that should pretty much do it. These ones are really ripply on here. But like I said, hopefully they flatten out. These ones right here on the printable film that seems like a pretty good way to go if we're doing this type of technique on here. Um, but these smaller ones, like I said, it'll just be like a small ripple because they're smaller. But you just use a full coating of glue on the back of these, spread it around evenly, and it should flatten out just fine. All right, but anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, can't wait to use these moons in some sort of application.